All right, welcome out, sports fans, to another episode of the uh, GT Sports. You, GT Sports Unlimited, is where we talk on Monday evenings. Uh, we talk uh, NFL, so we break down the prior week, and then we up, you know, we'll preview this week's games leading up to Sunday. I got uh, my co-host, my partner that comes on every Monday, uh, Thomas Martin. Thomas, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. What's up, sports fans? How you doing? So we're going to break down week nine. We'll start off with Thursday. Thomas and I haven't been off for a while scheduling and all kinds of stuff. I stay pretty busy, but uh, hopefully we're going to continue to come on every Monday. That's what we have scheduled at five o'clock. That kind of works for me and Thomas. Uh, last week I couldn't come in. I had to go and stream a, another game. So unfortunately the playoffs started for volleyball and, and I was already committed to doing that. So um, we should be on every Monday now. If anything changes, Thomas and I will work on trying to get another day where we can schedule it before Sunday because NFL is important and we both love talking football. So Thomas, if you're ready, we'll uh, first break down uh, week nine. These games that just occurred uh, this past week. And then, of course, after that, we'll uh, preview this upcoming week 10. But there was a lot of surprises um, on Sunday, man. I'm shocked. And, and we'll start off with this past Thursday's game. You had the New York Jets traveling to the Indianapolis team to play the Colts. No surprise. Colts get the uh, uh, win, 45 to 30. The Jets uh, made it a little competitive, maybe, but uh, I wasn't shocked. I, I anticipated that the, pay, that the uh, Colts would win the game. Uh, what do you say about this game? Um, the I never expected for the Jets to win this game. They, you know, I didn't think they stood a chance. But I must say. These last couple of weeks, the Jets have actually been fighting very, very hard. They've been real competitive. They got the win the, the last week from the um the guy Mike White. He, he's uh, he's surprising everybody. He looks real good out there, you know. And then last this week, you know, um, Mike White went out with an injury, and Josh Johnson, you know, he's a journeyman. Yeah, got him off the couch or whatever. He came in and had a a great game against the Colts. Man, he went. 27 for 41, 317 yards, three mm. touchdowns. You no, know? so I, I like I said, I didn't expect the Jets to win this game, man. But they, they're they're playing real competitive football, and, and I gotta put that. You know, I can't give all the credit to Robert Salah, but I've been saying Robert Salah is a great coach, man. They're they're going to fight, you know, they're going to fight. And the way Mike White is playing, you know, it's I'm wondering, you know, they were playing so bad with Zach Wilson. Will we see a some kind of quarterback controversy in New York, you know, anytime soon. But for the for the Colts, man, you know, good win. I, they they need to play a little better. That defense needs to step up a little bit. But I've been very impressed with Carson Wentz this year. You know, the the, the running back, Jonathan Taylor from the Colts, that man is a beast. You know, I like him coming out of Wisconsin. He's a tough runner. So, you know, I, I'm ready to see what the coach going to do down the stretch here, man, to see if they can make a run at these playoffs. They're in a very, very weak division, so it's possible. Yeah, well, Johnson, you talk about uh, Taylor, right? You're talking about Taylor. Is that the guy you're talking about? Yeah, John Taylor, the running back. Yeah, yeah he had like 19 carries. What do you have? Like uh, 172 yards, yards, something like that? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Two touchdowns. Um, I'll ask you this about the coach. Um Thomas, right now where we stand with the Colts, is this a team right now? They're four and five. Do you see them in the playoffs? Do you see them right now uh, as a wild card team or, or as a division? Because if they win the division, do you think they can win the division? Uh, t Tennessee would have to go on a pretty bad slump okay. for them to win a division. But the other two, the Jaguars and the Texans, they, you know, they stand no chance. So the, um, the, 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 Titans would have to go on a pretty bad slump for them to win, and may possibly a wild card. They have to have a good, real good second half for the season. So it's tough to say right now. We have to see how it goes down the stretch here. Okay. Uh, the next game, uh, it's sad to say, uh, it, we'll, we'll talk about the Broncos at the Cowboys. Uh, of course, the Dallas Cowboys. They're they're my team. You know, they take the loss 30 to 16, but really, Thomas, th th this game was blown out. Dallas's offense did absolutely nothing. These 16 points that came came toward the end of the game. So, you know, you and I always talk about it's just points that really you don't count it. You know, for the majority of this game, um, they got beat, man. And, and I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll start off here. Um, Dak looked a little rusted. He didn't play last week. You had Cooper Rush going into Minnesota. Man, you know, I thought that would be the game that the Cowboys would lose, and they didn't. 
and they pull one out, a tough one uh, in Minnesota. So then we come back, and I'm thinking, okay, it, you know, Dak will probably come back. I even said all week long, if he's not healthy, you know, bring Cooper Rush is coming off a big win. I, I think we'll be okay. Uh, but he decided to go with Dak. Dak, uh, you know, he struggled. But that offensive line, uh, Tyron Smith is out. Man, they were getting pressure on Dak the whole game. You know, there were some drop passes, I believe. I didn't see the whole I didn't catch the whole game. But, you know, I saw some highlights, read some articles today. You know, it, it just seemed to me, I, I know people are saying oh, it's just one loss. It's just This was a, a, a game. The Cowboys should not have lost. Uh, moving forward, I know it's just one game, but the way that the Cowboys played, the fact that Denver really held this high power offense, you know, running and passing to really zero points for pretty much the whole game worries me. You know, other teams are going to see what Denver did and they're going to be able to exploit this. It, it just, it was, you know, if you lose it, you lose it. But in the manner that the Cowboys lost this game, it's kind of worrisome to me. Um, what do you say about this game? Is it just if you're a cow? I know you're not a cowboy fan, but if you're, what would you tell the cowboy fan? Just one game, don't worry about it. Or should we make more out of this loss that Denver goes in in the manner that they beat these cowboys? Um, I will, I, I will say that in my opinion, this was a game that the cowboys should have won. But on another hand, I will say, I mean, the Broncos, they're not just some scrubs that, you know, you're just going to run over, you know. They they have a great running game with Jamal Williams and Melvin Gordon, that one-two punch. You know, Teddy Bridgewater, he's not, you know, a magnificent, you know, quarterback, but he manages the game. They have a, they have a good defense. So I guess all around they're a good, solid team. Now, in the manner that they beat the Cowboys, they're not that good. So I – I will probably say that that was a fluke. If those two teams were to play next week, I would say the Cowboys would beat them. Okay. So maybe I would say it's just one game, but you better look at some film and, and get it together because there is no reason why that game, why the Cowboys should be getting beat like that by the them by the Denver Broncos. It is it, no reason why. Okay, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to the defense. Today I was having conversations with some people, and I was like, "Listen, man, they try to." And this is just my personal opinion, but the, I've seen Diggs in the same conversation with Deion Sanders, same sentence. He don't belong there. Look, man, Deion was a shutdown corner. I watched him um, with Atlanta, with the Cowboys, with the 49ers. He played a little bit with the Redskins, I believe. Deion was a shutdown guy for the full game. I mean, he shut you down for the full game, okay? He wasn't getting burned you know, two or three times coming up with a big play intercession and then get burned. In this. That wasn't Dion. So, you know, what do you say about some people try to, you know, bringing in Diggs? I'm not saying Diggs is a bad guy, but in the same sentence with primetime Deion Sanders, what do you say? Should he be mentioned with primetime? Total disrespect to primetime Sanders. Total disrespect. Like I said, this is we're talking about a second year, a second year cornerback, man. We there's no reason why he should be in the same breath, same sentence, same paragraph, same book as Deion Sanders. No reason why. Yes, he leads the league in interceptions, but at the same time, he's second in the league in yards given up to opposite receivers. So it was like it's either he's going to catch a pick or he's giving up a 90 yard touchdown, you know. So there's no reason why he should be. He's a, he's a good cornerback. Don't get me wrong. You know, I, I would I would like to have him as a cornerback for the Baltimore Ravens right now. I would love it. But it's a, it's to put him in the same breath as a Deion Primetime Sanders, no way, no how. Total disrespect. All right. Yeah, I, I agree. And we'll see because Dix is still young. So we'll see how his future turns out. I mean, like you said, there's a lot of ups to him. But right now. He gives up big plays as well. Now, I just, you know, to me, I watch him play. I see his stats, and I'm like, man, I don't know. I saw Deion play, and some people are like, he's going to be like Deion. So, man, he got a ways to go. Deion was a shutdown corner. Man, he shut you down for the whole game. You know, he didn't get burned, uh, you, know, you know. So, yeah, we still he, he still got a ways to go. Just kind of wanted to get your opinion throw that out there. Next game we'll talk about, you got the Houston Texans and the Miami Dolphins. Both of these teams, we knew – that Houston was going to be bad. We just knew that. You know, there was still a lot of, as the seat when the season started, a lot of questions with, with Watson. Was he going to play? Was he not going to play? There was a lot of things up in the air for first year coach Cully for the Texans. And and just get to me came into a really bad, 
bad, bad position, right, as a head coach. Um, so we knew where we thought Houston was going to be this year. Miami has surprisingly uh, not done good this year. Now, I talked about Miami being a playoff team at the beginning, uh, and since then, um, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. Um, they uh, defensively, you know, they're okay, but, you know, Tua's been hurt. He hasn't been healthy, Thomas, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions with Tua still. You know, is he going to be the franchise guy for Miami? He's still very young, but there's, he's injury prone. He has been. We knew that coming out of college, going into the pros, and he's been like that uh, this year. So there's a lot of questions that remain on Tua, but outside of that, Miami does get the uh, small victory over Houston. But what do you say about Miami? Um, does this win do anything for their confidence? I mean, can they put, you know, four or five game wins? Can you see any bright spot to them beating the Texas? Because they didn't really beat a bad team by much. Um, I don't see anything good in beating the Houston Texans. I could probably gather the 13 friends right now and go out there on the field and beat the, and beat the Houston Texans. So it's like, you know, the Dolphins, man, they just, they have totally disappointed me this season, man. Totally. You know, that defense is so underwhelming right now. Like I said, Tua Tagovailoa, he's so injury prone and they still don't have a run game. It, it's just, it's, it's, it's real disappointing watching the Dolphins play. And like I said, Houston, they maybe win three games this year, maybe. You know, Tyrod Taylor came back this week, and he looked got awful, awful, terrible. When, when, I mean, he's been gone week for weeks and weeks and weeks. So, you know, it's first game, but he looked awful. Maybe Davis Mills will be taken back over in a couple of weeks. But, yeah, Houston will have one of the top two picks in the draft. So, and, and beating the Texans by one touchdown, I don't see anything good coming out of coming from that. That's not – no. Yeah, and if you're Miami, there was rumors that would talk about, you know, Miami pulling the trigger before the trade deadline on Watson, and they didn't. Now, look, I would have I would have done it. I would have done it. I, I would have because uh, looking at where we're at, and I know that's, that the two are still young, and maybe they're going to wait it out, and they should. But to me, I don't know if anything's going to come out of Watson. I mean, it, it, nothing has come out yet. He's just sitting there. There's a talent just sitting there. He may get a suspension, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, but I think if you're Miami, you pull the trigger. Right now, if I had to make a decision right now on Tua or Watson, I'm taking Watson. Even with the issues he's got, I think he's still going to play in the NFL. Uh, nothing's come out so far. There hasn't been a decision made. I don't know if there's going to be anything on the criminal side with the investigation, but the NFL still may suspend him. I don't know for how many games or a year, but – You'd still have him under your belt. We already know what Watson's going to do. In other words, what I'm saying is whatever happens, unless he goes to prison, I think he's going to be playing in the NFL. Maybe not this year, maybe next year, but he'll be back, I think. And I, and we already know what he can do. We already He's a proven quarterback, and he's still very young. You saw what he did with Houston. There's talent over in Miami. Uh, I would have pulled the trigger. Now, that's just me. I'm not the GM. Um, you know, I, I don't think two is going to stay healthy, Thomas. I, I, I'm, I'm really concerned. If I'm a Miami fan, he's young. He can't stay healthy consistently. Your body gets older. You take more hits. Where would this guy be? So if it turns out that, that he can't stay healthy uh, and then you try to go and you lost that on Watson, you know, you have to start all over again. So I don't know. I probably would have pulled the trigger, but they didn't. Uh, maybe they know something, of course, that I don't know. Um, but just me, just as a fan out here looking at what's been going on this season, nothing's really moving on Watson. Uh, I think he'll be back in the NFL, but that's just me. I could be totally wrong, but Miami definitely is going to need to do something. Uh, they're not going to make the playoffs, and it's been a disappointing season thus far uh, for the Miami Dolphins and their fans. Um, next game, we'll talk about the Patriots and the Panthers. Patriots get the big win. Um, over the Panthers. Here's my first question to you would be, can the Pan can the Patriots, and I think they're five and four, um, can they make the playoffs? Uh, I know you said that you didn't think they would. Have, ha has that changed your mind? I mean, do you think this team can actually, because if you look at the AFC, man, there's not really, I mean, Kansas City Chiefs, they're, they're struggling. The Bills lost. Uh, just as, I mean, could the Patriots slide in and make some noise now? I mean, I know you said at the beginning, you didn't think, have you changed your mind or are you still sticking with the fact no matter what this win, they're still not going to make the playoffs? 
man, when you really look at it, they're only one game back behind Buffalo. You know, so it's like, I mean, from the from numbers wise, they're right in the, in the midst of things, you know. But it's it's it it's a stat that I was looking at for the Patriots. The Patriots are five and four for the season. They're four and zero oh on the road. Mm. So if they can go into Gillette Stadium and take care of business like they're supposed to do, the Patriots would be one of the top teams. There's no reason why all of your, every last one of your losses come, should come at home. Like, come on now. So when you look at this Patriots team, man, you know, Mac Jones, he's playing, so he's playing good football. He is. If Buffalo, there's, they're not looking too, they're not looking too bright right now. So I'll say they're right in the midst of the playoff mix, man. It, it hurts me to say, but yes, they are. Well, and here's the thing. You know, I think Mac Jones is going to get better. Obviously, you know, with 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 uh, Bill Belichick and uh, McDaniel's there as his offensive coordinator, you know, this guy's going to get better. So, you know, they've got wins now. They still got they still got you know some games to go. You know, but I'm just saying they're pretty impressive. And you just said about the stat they're four and zero on the road. So this could be a dangerous team. Simply that Buffalo. In the time that they've had to kind of put two or three games between them and the Patriots, they have not. And so we'll jump over to their game now. Jaguars nine, Bills six. First of all, the Bills losing yesterday uh, was a shock to me. But the fact that that offense could only put six points up on a really bad Jaguars defense, right, kind of reminds me of the Cowboys. I thought the Cowboys and the Bills maybe hung out this week and talked about probably throwing this game. I mean, how can you explain? I mean, how do you explain this game, right? I mean, Dallas is almost unstoppable, and then they come into a Denver, and, and, and like you're saying, Denver is a legit team, though. I mean, they had their records four and four, but they, I agree with you, they they are a legit team. If you don't come out like the Cowboys didn't play their game, their A game, I could see Denver beating them. But the Jacksonville Jaguars are a different story. For them to be able to beat the Bills was shocking, but to hold the Bills. To six points the whole game. What do you say about that? Yeah. Um, going back to that, I could see the Broncos beating the Dallas Cowboys, but there is no way that I would have woke up Sunday morning and said, you know what? The Jacksonville Jaguars are going to beat the Buffalo Bills and not only beat them, keep them from scoring a touchdown. Hold the Bills to six points. We're talking about one of the most explosive offenses in the league. And they got held to six points by the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Buffalo Bills need to look in the mirror and fast because the, the offense is actually looked like this. Their offense has been struggling the last couple of weeks, actually. So it's like Buffalo, I still, I still have, you know, Buffalo, I still have them winning that division. I do have them winning that division over the Patriots, but you guys better look in the mirror and get it together fast. You, you guys, you gotten so used to having everything on Josh Allen, establish a run game. And I'm actually seeing comparisons to the Buffalo Bills that I'm seeing to the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. You guys are so much on these young quarterbacks and that you forget that you have running backs. Count, go back in time a little bit, hand it off, get some, e get something easy. You don't always have to go for the 50, 60 yard passes, you know? It, it, so these guys, man, they better look in the mirror, man. And, and fast. I know. I, I, I mean, that was shocking to me. That's one thing, you know, they went really good for, for a stance, you know, first week one of this season, they looked horrible, real bad. And then they, they do good. And then here they come again this game against a really bad Jacksonville team, really. And uh, they made them look like really like an A team. I mean, seriously, it, it, when the Bills lose this way, it kind of makes me think like, okay, how good are the Bills consistently? Because we know they can come in next week and be a good team because we know they have the capability of doing that. The problem I see with the Bills, they're not consistent with winning. This should have been a game that they should have won. You, No one would have picked... Uh, Jacksonville to beat them. And so that was shocking. But the fact that they could only score six points, muster six points for four quarters with that offense, like you said, that's terrible. And they do need to go back and look at this film 
uh, something was wrong there. These guys did not come out because you could score six. I mean, you could score a touchdown. You should be able to. So I'm, I'm a little concerned if I'm a Bills fan just because of the consistency. Next week, this team might come out, and they're going to blow the team they play, right? Because like I said, they have that capability. But then the, somewhere down the road, they're going to fall back to what you've seen today or yesterday and what you saw in week one. And, and if you're a Bills fan, that's what you're concerned about. Okay, we're going to go the next three weeks, and we're going to look like the Super Bowl team of the AFC. We're going to Super Bowl. But somewhere down the line in the next seven or eight games, be expecting the Bills to play a game like they did yesterday, which is either going to knock you out of the playoffs. And I think that's what's scary. That's the trend I see the Bills because every so often they come back and we don't even know who the heck they are. So, you know, great win for Jacksonville. Uh, Urban Meyer, Trevor Lawrence, that defense did their job. Um, but again, the Bills are just too good of a team to lose to a Jacksonville team that's still learning with the first-year coach and a first-year college guy coming to pros. You should never lose that way. Defense played pretty good for Buffalo, right? They only held them to nine points. The defense was there for Buffalo. It was the offense that didn't show up Sunday. Somebody forgot to tell them they had a football game to play. So we'll keep an eye on the Bills. My thing is I think the Bills are going to come back next week wherever they're playing. They're going to kick the crap out of somebody. But again, like I said earlier, it's the consistency that worries me about the Bills. Um, Next, we'll go to this game. I watched most of this game. Uh, Thomas, uh, of course, uh, Aaron Rodgers didn't play COVID uh, uh, issues, um, you know, but uh, Jordan Love coming in. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll let you uh, tell us how you thought Jordan Jordan Love did. But Kansas City on the other side gets the win 13-7, to but they really didn't look good either. I mean, really. If Aaron Rodgers plays this game, he blows out Kansas City. I'm telling you. But he just didn't play. You know, so I want you to talk a little bit about Jordan Love, the first game back. I mean, how did he look to you? I don't know if you saw the game or you saw some highlights or read some articles. And then after you're done there, talk about the Kansas City offense. His team is still struggling, and they look bad even though they got the win. I actually – I watched this whole entire game. I actually started Jordan Love on my fantasy team this week because Kyler Murray was out, so I had to see what he was going to do. Um, You know, everyone knows, you know, this was Jordan's, Jordan Love's first ever NFL start. <laughs> He looked real, he looked like, you know, it was his first career start. He was real jittery, you know, forcing throws and like that in that nature. To be honest, the way Jordan Love played, the Kansas City Chiefs should have blew the Green Bay Packers out. But that's just been the story of this Chiefs offense, man. I, I don't know what's going on with, with that Chiefs offense, but um, you no, know, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon for the Packers, they form a very, very good one-two punch at running back. You know, like I said, if Aaron Rodgers would have played, this game would have would have been a would have been a blowout. You know, for on a on the Kansas City Chiefs side, um, I was just saying it when we were talking about the Buffalo Bills. You know, they need to look in the mirror and all the chunk plays, all the bombs, all you know, it's it's time to to take a step back from that. You know, it's not working. Teams have looked at film, teams have studied y'all. They know what you guys are going for. So it's time to kind of switch it up a little bit. You know, it's, it's nothing wrong with a 10-yard pass. You know, it's nothing wrong with passing it, you know, 10 yards out, getting the first down. Every throw you make doesn't have to be a touchdown. It's nothing wrong with Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball away if he needs to. Some, it, you know, it's nothing wrong with punting the ball. You don't have to force something and turn the ball over. It's okay to hand it off to your running back let your running back get four or five yards. So it's just, you know, a lot of things that the that the Chiefs need to go look at and, and correct. But I'm sure Andy Reid, eventually, I feel like this team, will, they'll get it together, you know. But they better do it fast because the Chargers look like they want to take that and the Raiders look like they're trying to take out Broncos. So it's, that, that division is pretty tough, man. So the Chiefs better get it together fast. But Andy Reid, he's a great head coach, Hall of Famer coach, Hall of Fame coach, so. Eventually, I think they will get it together. They will. That team has a lot of talent to be bad for a long period of time. Right? They just have the talent. I think if you go into the Kansas City side first, to me, they're accustomed to quick scoring, high pace, and uh, and we're going to score 40, you know, 30, 40, 50 points. And this is what they've been accustomed to because they've been able to do that for the last couple of years. I think defenses are starting to figure them out. 
you have some really good defensive coordinators in the NFL, they're going to figure you out. I think if you're the Kansas City Chiefs and Andy Reid, you start taking what the defense gives you, right? Yep. The, the, yep. This high power, uh, you know, we're going to score quickly in a two-minute uh, offense. It's not working for you. So I know it's not your identity. It's not what you're accustomed to with Hill and all that speed on the outside and Mahomes being electrified and doing all this stuff and, and Kelsey, you know, it's not there all the time. So I think you, you got to slow the pace down. If you're going about 85, you got to go a little bit, you know, 55, 60 and start learning how to, you know, three, four minute, five minute, you know, offense and, and, and just get and just take what the defense is giving you because you're still a very talented team coming up with the run game. I think that's what they're going to have to do. Probably not accustomed to it, but this high pace, we're going to score a lot of points, isn't working for you. Teams have figured out how to slow you down and to some point stop you. So now you got to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, this is not our identity, but we're going to have to find a way. The, the thing right now with that is how good is that defense? Because I think the offense feels like we got to score a lot of points. Our defense really ain't that good this year, right? So we've got to score. We got to outscore you to beat you. You know, can they score 17 points in a game, which is not something that they're accustomed to doing, and have our defense hold you to less than 17? So there's a lot of things here that Andy Reid needs to figure out in his assistance with what they're going to do because this team was built to run and score a lot of points. That's how they're built. They're not built to kind of grind you out. So it's going to be very interesting to see what Andy Reid does. You know, can he figure this thing out and make the adjustments to continue to be that high, you know, power offense that scores a lot of points? They haven't been able to do that yet. Or is he going to have to change it up and just, I'm, I'm going to take what, what the defense gives me. Very interesting. But this team does not look like a team right now that will be back in the Super Bowl. And I've been saying that for weeks. And every time I see them, every Sunday, they don't do anything to change my mind. This is really not a team. You know, Thomas, listen, they may not even make the playoffs. I mean, you yeah. know, it, it get to that point. That AFC is stacked. So we'll just keep an eye on Kansas City. Next game, Cardinals and 49ers. Listen, I'm you and I talked, right, earlier. Arizona might be the best team in the NFL, you know, um, with – you know, still maybe the Packers and Aaron Rodgers down there, but they got the best record. But to me, uh, they're the best team in the NFL right now. Um, San Francisco, they beat San Francisco. This is the second time they played in this year, and it wasn't even close both times. So that tells me that they're way ahead of the Niners. They're going to be way ahead of the Packers. The Rams lost yesterday. So this team is looking really good in their division to me right now. And they're looking really good. Um, in the NFC. Uh, of course, you know, Aaron Rodgers is there, so I I'm not going to throw the Packers out just yet. I know that you talked about four teams in the NFL and the NFC that you thought uh, out of these four teams, one of them will make it, and I agreed with you. But right now, Arizona's looking like the team to beat in the NFC. Uh, the one loss that they had came uh, not last, about a week ago when they lost, and, and they could have won that game uh, against Green Bay. Green Bay beat them, but there was some miscommunication, but man, they did. They come down the field on short time and get the opportunity. So I think if these teams play again, it's going to be great. Aaron Rodgers didn't have all his weapons, still gets to win. That was impressive. But that being said, I'll ask you to talk a little bit about the Arizona Cardinals, but also talk about the Niners. Are the Niners even going to make the playoffs, Thomas? I'm, I'm going to start off with the um, with the Arizona Cardinals. I'm going to name off all the people that missed this week. Well, a lot of the people that missed this week. No Kyler Murray. No DeAndre Hopkins. No A.J. Green. Chase Edmonds went out in the first quarter. No J.J. Watt. And the Cardinals scored 31 points on a so-called tough team in defense of the 49ers. So just imagine what would have happened if this team was healthy. It's, in my opinion, there's no team right now that's as loaded on both sides of the ball as this Arizona Cardinals team. Loaded. And I just want to give a, a round of applause to Cliff Kingsbury, the job that he's done with this team. I want to give a round of applause to the GM of the Arizona Cardinals, 
for the roster that he's built around Kyler Murray, all the weapons that he's given them. The Arizona Cardinals, they want to win. Kyler Murray, he wants to win. DeAndre Hopkins, he wants to win. They, J.J. Watt is a winner, even though he's out for the season. His presence is still there. They surrounded this team with winners, guys that want to win. And like we were talking earlier, and I named four teams that I think could go to the Super Bowl from the NFC. The Arizona Cardinals, the Green Bay Packers, the Los Angeles Rams, and the um, – who, who was the other team? You had the Rams, the Bucks, Buccaneers, and the Buccaneers. Out of all of those teams – I would have to say the Arizona Cardinals would 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 beat would beat all of them. It'll be tough against the Buccaneers, but that defense hurt. I I can't like I said I can't say enough about the Arizona Cardinals, man. But when it, but when it comes to the 49ers, no no playoffs for them. You know they're it, it, they're going to have to Jimmy Garoppolo. He played a good game this week. I can't put this game off on Jimmy Garoppolo, but I think it's time to move on. You know that. They went to the Super Bowl. They lost his time. You know, his time is up. Put Trey Lance in there, see what he can do. Kyle Shanahan, you know, redo your – you need to redo your playbook, make plays around Trey Lance that fits his scheme and everything. Put those RPOs in there. You know, just, just – it's time for a change of scenery, man. So, the 49ers, they have a lot of talent on the, te- on the team. But this year, no, they're not going to make the playoffs. And – the 49ers, they're almost they're like the Patriots. The 49ers haven't won a home game all year, 0 and 4. So it's like if you can't go into your home stadium and handle business, I don't you're not going to go very far in this NFL. Absolutely. Uh, I agree with you. And then the next game we got, we got the Titans and the Rams. This was a good game. I watched this game. Um, you know, I, hey, listen, man, no Henry. I think okay, well, the Rams are gonna take this. You know, you're playing at home. Listen, that Titan defense came to play, baby. I mean, listen, they were they were surprising. Um, Stafford had a really bad game. He didn't didn't play very good. He looked awful to me, really personally. Uh, if you uh, analyze, if you just kind of look at the whole game, uh, it, you know, he had some turnovers. Just didn't look very good. Um, first time I seen him in a game that I saw watching the game that he didn't play good uh, uh, with the Rams. Um, but. Listen, the Titans go in there without their main guy. I mean, they have Adrian Peterson. He might have played okay, I guess. I don't know. I think, personally, he didn't really have much of an impact at all with that win. But to me, it was that defense. That defense won that game for the Titans. What do you say about this game? You know, kind of first talk about the Titan defense and then, you know, kind of turn it over to the Rams. This loss, you know, they're trying to stay up with Arizona. Um, this loss really hurt him because I think this is a, this this was a game that the Rams should have won minus because uh, that defense is so good without their main guy you think they're going to be able to shut them down but it was not. Yeah. Um, like um, I'm just go off what you what you said. You know, this game wasn't even about the Titans' offense. The offense did not play good. Tannehill did not play good. But that defense played like the Super Bowl winning Chicago Bears back in the day. <laughs> they mm-hmm. the boys were running around. They, they were hungry. That defense was hungry. Jeffrey Simmons, the D tackle. Oh, my goodness. He had a wonderful game. You know, um, but I'm going to say that the, Ram, for the Rams, this to me is one game for the Rams. The Rams. The Rams is a great team. The Rams have a great team. They're loaded top to bottom. I actually think that the Rams and the Cardinals will probably be like the NFC championship game, you know, in, in my personal opinion, barring any, you know, any injuries or whatever, you know, that, that maybe they needed to be humbled a little bit. So in this, in this opinion of mine, I think that this was just one game for the Rams. I mean, they're seven and two. I mean, Stafford almost had 300 yards pass and didn't quite have that, but you know, you, I mean, they just, you know, to have the Titans go in there and have the defense beat you, you know, and then you look at the offense because the Titans defense is good, right? But then you go look at the other and you, okay, look at the offense and what the Rams have. And that, because to me, the Rams defense is always, it's, it's the team's strong point, right? It's their defense to get turnovers and stops. So you couldn't stop or, you know, you let the Titans score 28 points uh, without their main guy. 
it's kind of a little concerning to me. But at the end of the day, you're right. This, this is still one loss. You know this team is still good. You still got a good quarterback in Stafford. And that defense is more than legit, right? So, right, we'll see what ends up happening. There's a very good chance, like you said, it'll end up being these two teams that'll match up. Of course, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady will have something to say about this. But this could very well be the team that meets up, you know, the, the Cardinals. Here's the deal with the Cardinals, Thomas, that worries me, their experience. You know, when you get into the regular season, is one thing, you get on the road and you're winning. But when it comes to the playoffs, these teams, that's where you see the Rams become champions. That's where they play their best ball. The regular season game is, ah, it's a regular season, one loss. They already know what they have. That defense already knows what they can do. So come playoff time is when I'd be a little concerned about the Cardinals because of the experience, because they're so young, because you've got Aaron Rodgers, who's lived in the playoffs and the Super Bowl, Tom Brady, who's lived in the, Super, in the playoffs and the Super Bowl. And then, of course, you've got the Rams. They've been there as well. So out of these four teams, if these are the four teams, the four, last four teams standing in the uh, NFC, the other three teams have a lot of experience. How would that affect the Cardinals? When you will see, just something to kind of talk about and kind of keep an eye on. Will the experience hurt the Cardinals? We shall see. But for right now, today, they're the best team in the NFC, I think. Uh, next, we'll go to the Browns and the uh, Bengals. I, we, I've talked about the Bengals. I still love Joe Burrows, even though he had a bad game. I thought this game was going to be a little bit more competitive. I watched some of it off and on. It was not. Uh, the, the you know Cleveland had been dealing a lot this week with Odell Beckham Jr. He finally got you know he finally left, and there was a lot of stuff going on. There was a lot of distractions, you know. And then he had a really hot Cincinnati Bengal team uh, that they had to play. I thought the Bengals were going to do a lot better. Hey, but credit the Browns, they came in, played a hell of a game, scored a lot of points. Joe Burrow's um, didn't have a good game, and it cost his team. Uh, talk a little bit about this game, and, and where do the Browns sit right now as far as? a big contending team and possibly getting into the AFC championship. Is this team still good enough to be in the AFC championship as we speak right now? The, uh, the Browns or the Bengals, as far as the AFC? The, the Browns, the Browns, the Browns, the Browns. Uh, um, I, no, I, I don't see the Browns going to, to an AFC championship game. You know, they, they have a great, they have a good team. They're low. You know, they have a lot of names on the team, the defense, they can rush the pass are very good. But I still I don't think Baker Mayfield could take them to an AFC championship game with all these good teams that we have in the AFC. You know, um, they have a great running game. They could have used Odell Beckham, man. I just I don't know what was going on with that. I, I don't know what was going wrong. Why Baker Mayfield wasn't throwing Odell the ball. I'm not even going to get into all of that. But when it comes to the to the to the Bengals, every time they take a step forward, they take two steps backwards. You would think that they're getting ready to break out. Oh man, this might be the year for the Bengals. And then all of a sudden they have a performance like this. I don't see a reason why the Bengals should have gotten blew out 41 to 16. You know what? Yeah, Bur Burrow did. He had a he had a very bad game. He was he was off. So I, I, the Bengals possibly a wild card team, possibly. But I don't see them making it out, out of the wild card game. They have a, young, a lot of young talent. And I think they're going to be good for the next, maybe the next decade. The, you know, they, with that young talent that they have with Burrow and Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon and T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd, and on and on and on, you know. So they're, they're a young team, man. You know, they, they just need to learn to be consistent, in my opinion. They have to, to win consistently. I agree with you. I think that they're exciting to watch, right? Especially when, you know, they got that high power offense where they score a lot of points when they're on. They're an exciting team to watch. And I think that they are going to make some noise in the next couple of years. Um, but you want to see consistency from Joe Burrows in, in this incident, right? He's, he's their leader, right? And uh, it's, it's just upsetting. I thought this was going to be a closer game. It was not. We'll see where the Bengals end up. I mean, the, the, the Browns and the, and the Bengals basically have the same record at five and four uh, with the Browns. So I, don't, I personally don't think the Bengals will be uh, after this performance. I just don't think they're consistent enough. Uh, they're going to have to beat teams like Cleveland. When they have the opportunity to play these teams, 
these teams that are playoff because I think Cleveland will be a playoff team, right? They were a playoff team last year. So when I want to see what Cincinnati can do against against playoff teams like this, you know, can they win some of these games? And right now, this game they didn't perform like I thought that they could. So they still got a ways to go. I, I don't know. I was hoping that they'd make the playoffs and they still might, but after a performance like this, I don't think they will. But a simple fact that, like you said, just the teams that are in the AFC, it's tough. Uh, you got to be consistent. For the Browns, I think the Browns will make the playoffs, um, but I don't think that uh, they're going to get to the AFC championship either. Um, I would ask you one question about Beckham. How how do you think his departure from Cleveland, do you think it will affect Cleveland's performance as far as the, the high expectations they had? He, Odell Beckham Jr. leaving the Browns, how much is that going to hurt the Cleveland Browns football team? It, uh, to be honest, I don't think it's going to hurt him at all because he wasn't in the game plan anyway. He wasn't getting the ball. He, it was like he was just out on the field, just just out there, just – like like a nobody. So, you no, know, he, he wasn't in the game plan. He wasn't making an impact on the field. So it, it's like you might as well release him. He's, I you know, for, and like I said, Odell Beckham to me is still one of the best receivers in the league. I just don't understand what was going on in that situation, why Baker Mayfield wouldn't get him the ball. And when he tried to get him the ball, the ball went into the crowd and hit up and, and hit, a, 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 hit the audience. Like, I, 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 just, I don't understand what was going on. I, I think we're going to hear more about this story as the weeks and months come out. I guarantee you it, it, this isn't the end of that story. Um, next game, we got uh, Falcons traveling to New Orleans to play the Saints. I, I thought the Saints were going to win this game. But listen, somebody forgot to tell Atlanta that they're rebuilding, man. They're 4-4, four and four, they're 500 right now. <laughs> great great win for the Falcons, man. I mean, a good against a good Saint defense, they score – um, 27 points. Um, so listen, I'll ask you to talk a little bit about Atlanta. What's going on with this team? I mean, you know, they're playing a lot better than what we had anticipated they were going to play uh, this season. What do you say about this team and this game? I must say, man, Arthur Smith has the Atlanta Falcons playing some good football. You know, Arthur Smith, you know, he was the offensive coordinator for the Tennessee Titans last year. You know, the, the Atlanta Falcons signed him as their head coach, man, and he has these boys balling. They're playing like they're trying to win, man. I got to I got to give them that. I want to say I want to give a shout out to Cordero Patterson. Cordero Patterson, you know, he's been mostly like a special teams player, a, you know, a gadget player in the NFL, you know, kind of going from team to team for a minute. But he's went to Atlanta and settled in and became a really big impact player for the Atlanta Falcons. You know, um, with Julio Jones leaving Atlanta, Calvin Ridley, the their next, the other star receiver, he just took a break from football, you know, because of mental health. So, mm -hmm. at, Matt Ryan is doing a great job with what he has, and Cordero Patterson has stepped up. They got the Ricky Cow Pitts from Florida. That man is a he's a freak of nature. He, he it's a, a bunch of talent. So yeah, the, Arthur Smith has the Atlanta Falcons. Man, they're playing some very, very, very good football right now. And well, if you Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, if you look at Matt Ryan's game, he was 23 of 30 for 343 yards, two TDs. Yeah. I mean, the guy's playing good. They got that that guy out of uh, what? That, the guy just came out, Kyle Pitts. He's, he's a hell of a tight end. Listen, yeah. man, this team's making some noise. When you play the Atlanta Falcons and the Cowboys got the Atlanta Falcons coming next, they better come with their A game, man. Or oh, this could be a consecutive back-to-back -back losses. This is not going to be an easy game for the Cowboys. Somebody forgot to tell Atlanta, hey, you're not supposed to be winning that many games. <laughs> this team, I think they're trying to get into the playoffs, really. And there's no reason why they can't. They, they're, they're playing good ball right now. So this is a very scary Atlanta team. You better come with your A game if you're playing them because they're coming every Sunday to win some football games. Oh. Hey, let's talk a little bit about the Saints. What do you say about the Saints? They're 5-3. and three. Um, Jameis Winston is out, obviously. Um, is this team going to be able to contend for a playoff spot at five and three right now. That um that injury to Jameis Winston was devastating for the Saints, man. Jameis Winston was playing some very, very good football, man. And it, it, and it really hurts me. It hurts me to see that. You know, he he's always been, you know, very, very criticized, you know, for his decision making. And, you know, he was 
wasn't all the way mature back when he was with Tampa Bay. And I think, you know, this was really, really his chance to reinvent himself, man. And he was playing some very good football. So I, I wish Jameis Winston, man, a, a speedy recovery, man, and just hope that he gets another chance, you know, to come back and be the starter for the New Orleans Saints. And I just – I don't see the Saints making the playoffs with Trevor Simeon as their, as their quarterback. You know, I, I just don't see that. Maybe Taysom Hill will eventually take over as the star. Even though uh, Simeon, he's not playing the worst of – you know, he's not playing the horribly football, but, you know, it's only been like two games. And I, I just don't see him continuously putting up, you know, consistent good games. I mean, like I said, maybe Taysom Hill takes over, but I don't see him either taking this Saints team to the playoffs. So – yeah, it's a real bummer seeing Jameis Winston go down like that, man. Yeah, it's it's sad. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs either. And next game we'll talk about the uh, Las Vegas Raiders uh, taking on the New York Giants. Great win for the Giants. Uh, I thought the Raiders could win this game. And this is another one of those games that we talked about, Bills, Cowboys, Saints losing, um, you know, I thought the Raiders should have won this game. This is my issue with the Raiders. They do really, really good. Then they lose to a team they should win. Talk a little bit about this game. What do you know about this game? Um, I just want to say, man, the 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 Raiders, they've been through a lot over these past over this past month or two. You know, the with the things that just happened with Henry Ruggs, you know, the car accident and everything like that, and having to release him. It, that's that's real, you know. That's real sad to see, man. And I think the GM Mike Mayock. I just I don't see him coming back after this season. He has made some terrible, terrible decisions since he's been GM of that team. They just released their first round cornerback that they drafted two years ago, Damon Arnett. Today, you know, he got caught threatening to kill people with, you know, and posting videos with guns and everything. So they just released him, and it's just. You know, Mike Mayock, he drafted Cleveland Farrell three, I think like three years ago. He's been a bust. They drafted Alex Leatherwood this year. He's been a bust. They just had to move him to guard. So the uh, the Raiders, they've been playing some good football, man. Hopefully they make the playoffs. I want them to make the playoffs just for everything that they've gone through. But uh, my, but the decision that Mike Mayock has made, it's just, it, no, he, he's, he's done. He's done after this season. He should be. We'll see what happens. Next game we'll talk about is one that I'm sure you're very interested in. Minnesota Vikings playing the Baltimore Ravens. This this is a great ball game. Ravens yeah. get the win, 34-31. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to throw it to you. Break this game down for us. Man, I, man, my, my Ravens had me scared for a minute. They had me scared. Whoa, but I got it. Lamar Jackson, man, you can never, ever count him out, ever. You know, so – um. I will say, man, that Ravens secondary, they they have they have to do something. We cannot keep giving up these big plays and giving up 30 points every game. That's not who we are. That's right. not who Baltimore Ravens are. We always play tough smash mouth defense. Always. That's always been our thing. And we need to continue that. We can't get too, you know, caught up in the Lamar Jackson hype you know, to think, well, well, we don't need to play defense anymore. You know, no, we can't do that. That's not who we are. So the our offense, yes, our offense looks great, but I'm still, like I said, I'm concerned about that defense. If we can get that defense in order and, and have still our offense playing like this, there's nobody who can beat the Baltimore Ravens, in my personal opinion, in the AFC. No one. And, you know, Thomas, you're right. The defense can't be giving up those points because if you do, you're not going to make it to the AFC championship. You're not definitely going to get out of the AFC. The defense has to play better. The offense is what it is. It's good. It can score some points. But that defense, and you're absolutely right, Ravens are known for their defense. They've been yeah. known like that for years to come. Uh, they don't give up a lot of points. They, they, they'll you know shove it down your throat type defense. So the fact that they're giving up a lot of points even though they're winning games, if this continues with this defense giving up the points, it's going to hurt them somewhere down the road or in the playoffs. So that defense has got to get a lot better. But it was still great to see Baltimore Ravens win uh, this game uh, against a good Minnesota team. I mean, Minnesota came to play, man. They took the loss last week to Dallas. It didn't set well with them. They were coming in here. They gave it all they got, and they're able to grind out a win. Great win for the Baltimore Ravens. But again, we'll continue to see if that defense can get better a week in and week out before the playoffs starts. And then the last game that we'll talk about uh, was the uh, 
the Los Angeles Chargers are playing the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Chargers get the win. This was a good game, very competitive, but I anticipate that the Chargers would get the win. Uh, your thoughts on this game? The, um, Chargers, they had – they had to get back on track. You know, it took them a couple games, but Justin Herbert, 32 for 38, 356 yards and two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. What a game. What a game. It, you know, maybe they just, he needed to be humbled a little bit these last couple of weeks. And, you know, people go through that. But I got the char – I have the Chargers. I have the Chargers winning at the AFC West, man. I, I have them winning that. And the Chargers, they're going to be a tough team to beat. They're going to be a, a very tough team. That offense is explosive. And even on the defensive side of the ball, they have playmakers. Derwin James, Joey Bosa, they, they have playmakers over there, man. So I, I, I see them going – I see them having a great, great, great season. The Eagles, not the opposite. You know, Jalen Hurts is not the answer. Nick Mirianni is the head coach, is not the answer. It's, it, it's probably time to rebuild that team, get younger. Get, you know, the offensive line are getting older. Defense is getting older. You know, just it's time to rebuild, you know, get rid of some of them old pieces and, you know, just start from the bottom. Get some draft Absolutely. pick. You know, do what you got to yeah. do. I don't think they have the answers right now either. For the long term, in my opinion, uh, that they're going to need to be able to get back and contend for a Super Bowl. Uh, we'll see what happens with the Eagles. Tonight's game will be talked about. We'll talk. We'll break that game down next week, but you do have Chicago Bears uh, and the Pittsburgh Steelers should be a really good one. Uh, just off the hand, who do you have, uh, Pittsburgh uh, or the uh, Bears? <laughs> uh, I know you love your Bears, but. I, I want to say Bears, but I'm going to say the Steelers. Yeah, I think the Steelers will get it too, but I hope the Bears do win. Uh, you know, hopefully they can play a good game. But, yeah, it looks like, because, you know, remember, Pittsburgh don't always come out and play good Pittsburgh football. Sometimes they struggle a lot, so. We'll see yeah. what happens with the Bears, but I'm going to go with you as well. I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll break this game down uh, next week. Now we're going to go over to week 10. Uh, well, we'll start off with uh, the first game. Um, you're going to have your Baltimore Ravens traveling to Miami to play the Dolphins. Uh, we just broke this game down. We talked about how Miami had been struggling. They didn't look very good this past weekend. Uh, I'm going to take the Ravens, man, with that big win over Minnesota. I think they're going to come back in uh, and they're going to uh, handle business with the Dolphins. Who do you have? I'm going to take Baltimore Ravens in a, in a very not close game. I don't think this game will be that close. Right. Uh, I, I anticipate I'll be very shocked if Miami beats the Ravens uh, if they are playing in Miami. But uh, that is our Thursday game this week. So in a couple of days, uh, they'll be up. Uh, so uh, tune in. Uh, but I'm, we're both taking the Ravens over the Miami Dolphins. And then we'll go up to our Sunday games and we'll start off with the Atlanta Falcons traveling to Dallas to play the Cowboys. We just talked about the Atlanta Falcons and their 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 impressive win they had this past uh, uh, weekend. Cowboys really, really struggle, but I'm going to tell you, I anticipate that the Cowboys will play better uh, on Sunday than they did uh, this past Sunday. They're, they're, they're going to hear it all week that, you know, they've got to eat it up and it's not going to sit well with Dak Prescott and these guys. Now, Ezekiel Elliott's kind of hurt. I don't know if he'll be ready to play, uh, but they'll have Tony Pollard there, so they're not going to lose a lot, I think, in the run game. Um, so I think Dallas is going to play a lot better, but they better be careful. Because Atlanta's coming in. Somebody forgot to tell these guys that, hey, you're not that good. Matt Ryan's coming in. They think they can beat anybody right now. Hey, listen, we can – and that's scary when a team feels that way. They go out there and play. There's no pressure on them. We're not supposed to win. If we lose, everybody expects us to lose, right? But if we win, and we're the only ones basically that think that we can win. So I'm going to take the Dallas Cowboys. But I'm telling you, my Cowboys, be very careful coming to your A game. This team – could come in and do to you exactly what Denver did. But I anticipate that Dallas will play better. So I'm going to take my Cowboys. Who do you have? I got this being a high-scoring game. There's going to be a lot of offense in this game. But at the end of the day, I, I, I see the Dallas Cowboys coming out on top. Okay. Next game, we'll have the New Orleans Saints traveling to play the Titans. Uh, we saw the Titans. We saw what that defense did. Uh, they were very impressive. Uh, but again, they don't have uh, Henry. So this Saints defense will be able, 
I think, to be able to, to prepare without him. And he's a big part of what they do to Titans. Now, uh, defensively, I think the Saints are going to, they're going to come out. They hated this loss that they got, so they're going to come out and they're going to play. The question for me with the Titans is, what Titan team are we going to get? Are we going to see that same defense? Or are they going to get lit up a little bit? I'm going to take the Titans simply because of the offense and what we just broke down with the New Orleans Saints. Without James Winston, how much can they do? They got Hill back there, and he does a lot of things, but he's really not a quarterback, your quarterback that can – that can. he's excited and he has flashes and he does big things. But for four quarters, you know, like a Peyton Man, like a Tom Brady, like a – like a uh, Herbert, like a uh, Aaron Rodgers, you know, is he that type of quarterback? I don't think he is. So I think Saints offense is going to struggle with this uh, uh, Tennessee defense. I don't know if Tennessee is going to play as good as they did this past weekend, but they're still really good defense. And they know they've got to pick it up without Henry back there. They know the load falls on them to be able to get victories. So I anticipate Tennessee will come out. I'm going Tennessee. Who do you have? Um, I, I think I'm going to take the Tennessee Titans at home. You know, I don't really see the Saints coming in there beating them with Trevor C. Me and that quarterback. You know, I just don't even know. You know, they have Alvin Kamara, but, you know, they don't have really anything else with Michael Thomas being out for the season. Like I said, no Jameis Winston. Yeah, I, I just don't see the, the Saints having enough to beat the Titans. I agree. Next one's going to be a good one, uh, Thomas. You got the key, Cleveland Browns traveling over to New England to play the Patriots. Now this game is going to be at Gillette Stadium, and we've already, and you've already said you've shown, we've talked about the the Patriots record uh, at home. They're not very good. They're better on the road. Um, who do you have winning this game? Patriots at home, where they struggled, or are the Browns that just came off a huge win over the Bengals? I think I'm going to take the Cleveland Browns going into New England and winning that game. I, I, you know, I think they're going to really get after Mac Jones. You know, he's not very, a real, very mobile quarterback. So I, I think, you know, just Dave and Clowney and Miles Garrett, I think they're going to have very good games. Uh, so, yeah, I, I have the Browns beating the Patriots. You know, I'm going to pick the Browns, but I'm not going to be shocked if the, if the, if the Patriots uh, uh, win this game. Bill Belichick, man, he's just such a great coach. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a Patriots fan by any means, but – um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the game that, that's surprising. You know, I still, I'm still not sold on Baker Mayfield. You and I have talked about that, what he can do consistently. Um, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the Browns. But my gut tells me that the Patriots are going to pull this one out. But I'm going to go against my gut, and I'm going to take uh, uh, the Browns. But I, I think the Patriots are going to surprise the Browns. Uh, but again, you, you like you talked about, they're not good at home. They're better on the road. Why is that? I have no idea. Most teams are better at home, but somehow these guys like to play away from Gillette Stadium. But this is a, a home game, uh, so I'm going to stick with uh, the Browns. This next game isn't going to be much of a game. You have the Buffalo Bills going up against the Jets. Now, if the Bills come in and play the way they played last week, then this may be an interesting game. But I think the Bills are going to come out. They're pissed. I'm assuming the Bills are pissed from the performance that they put up this past weekend. They're going to come in. They're going to take out their frustrations on the Jets. I think the uh, Bills are going to win and win big. What do you say? Yeah, I got the Bills winning, winning big. N not, not too much competition in this game. Next game, you got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers traveling to Washington to play the Washington Redskins. Oh, I'm sorry, the Washington football team. Um, Washington's defense has not been good this, this year. They're two and six. They've only gotten two. It's kind of surprising. I thought this team was going to be better and be, you know, competing for an NFC uh, East title with the Cowboys. They're not. Um, Tampa Bay, you know, at times Tom Brady has not looked like a, a, a super uh, champion Tom Brady, but he is Tom Brady. He always gets it together. I'm thinking they're going to go into Washington and get a win over uh, the football, the Washington football team. Who do you have, uh, Washington or Tampa? Yeah, I'm taking um, – with that – the way that Washington defense has been playing this year, there's no way I see them beating Tampa Bay. No way. No, and I, I'm taking Tampa as well. Uh, next, uh, you have the, the struggling Carolina Panthers going up against the uh, Arizona Cardinals. Now, I don't know if Hopkins and all these guys are back, but you saw what they did uh, to the 49ers without some of their stars. 
Uh, I don't think they're going to slow down. Whether they're ready to play or not, I'm still taking Arizona to beat the Panthers. I'm not giving the Panthers the chance to win this game. Who do you have? Yeah, Arizona. Especially if Kyler Murray. Sam Donald is playing some of the worst football I've ever seen in my life with Carolina. So I, I, I don't like it's like you said. I, I see no way the Panthers are beating the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, I agree. Now this is going to Lambo. Uh, you've got Russell Wilson less because I don't think Russell Wilson is still playing, is he? I don't know if he's going to be he back just, for this. He's been cleared to play today. Oh wow. Okay. So here's the deal. Now you've got Russell Wilson traveling to Lambo to play against the uh, uh, Packers. Now, we still don't know, but I'm assuming because of COVID protocols, Aaron Rodgers, I don't think as of today, will be back. We don't know uh, if it will be cleared. But if Aaron, let's just assume Aaron Rodgers isn't playing this game at Lambeau. You got Jordan. And now you've got Russell Wilson coming back, who is probably going to be a little rusty because he had played. So let's just say this. Let's say the Packers are going to start Jordan Love. They're not going to have Aaron Rodgers. Now that may change, but let's say he's not going to play. Russell Wilson, we know he's been clear today, is going to play at the in this game for the Seahawks. Who do you have without Aaron Rodgers for the Packers? I gotta go Seahawks. And that in that situ in that particular situation, I gotta take the Seattle Seahawks. Like I said, Jordan Love didn't look good at all. So it is no reason, you know, why I think. He didn't give me a reason to think that maybe next week he could come back and turn around and then beat a Russell Wilson led Seahawks. No, nah, I just don't see it. So yeah, I'm taking Seahawks. So let me say this. I'm going to be with you too. So let's say this. This is fair to say. If Aaron Rodgers does not play with the Packers, you and I are sticking with Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. If Aaron Rodgers does play, though, we'll change our pick and go to the Packers. Yeah. Okay. I got it. I got it. Yeah, I'm with you too. I, I agree. If Aaron Rodgers didn't play, I'm taking the Seattle Seahawks to, to win in Lambeau. If Aaron Rodgers does play on Sunday, then I'm switching my pick and I'm going with Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Uh, next game, you have the Kansas City Chiefs. You've seen, uh, you've heard me and Thomas here breaking this game down. Uh, you, you know, the Chiefs, uh, they won this past weekend. They did not look very good. Uh, they're going to play a Raiders team that I think are hungry. Listen, I'm going to tell you first, I'm taking the Raiders in this game. It's a home <laughs> game, and I think the Raiders are going to show out this game, and I think they're going to beat Kansas City. Who do you have? I'm taking the Las Vegas Raiders in this one, baby, at home. I think you know, I, I think Derek Carr is playing some real, real, very, very good football this year. I think, And I think they're, they're mad about the loss that they suffered this week. So I think they're going to come out and play some very good football against the Chiefs. I got Raiders. Right, and you still see the Chiefs struggling offensively and defensively. So there's a lot of room for the Raiders to be able to, to, to hurt Kansas City. We'll see if they'll be able to do that. It is a home game, so it's going to be great. I think I said Los Angeles. It's Las Vegas Raiders. If I say Los Angeles, my apologies. It's Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, next, you've got the Jacksonville Jaguars coming off of a huge win uh, against the Bills. Uh, they're going to be playing the Colts. Uh, can they perform again like they did against the Bills? I think, Thomas, it was more of the Bills. I mean, the Jaguars played good, don't get me wrong, but a lot of this loss for the Bills this past weekend was the Bills themselves not playing good. But now they're going to play a Colts team that's been pretty good. Uh, so who do you have, Jacksonville or Indianapolis? Yeah, I, I got the Colts. I got the Colts winning this. I think Carson Wentz has been playing some very, very good football. No, I think um, the defense are going. They're going to play some real good football this week against Jacksonville. So yeah, I'm taking the Indianapolis coach. Uh, yeah, so do I. Um, next, you got the Detroit Lions, and I know how you feel about the Detroit Lions. They're going to be playing Pittsburgh. Uh, they're traveling to uh, Pittsburgh to play Pittsburgh. So I got Pittsburgh in this. I, I don't give Detroit a chance to win this game. Um, you know they're winless still. They haven't won a game. I don't think so. Uh, who do you have, Pittsburgh or Detroit? I'm sure I know who you got, but I still got to ask the question. Pittsburgh, no competition. <laughs> um, this next game we're going to talk about, you got the Minnesota Vikings traveling to play uh, Herbert and, and the Chargers. Now, I think this is going to be a, a, a really good game. It's an afternoon game. Um, and, you know, even though the to me, Minnesota is better than what their record shows. So this is going to be a good one. They're playing in L.A. Uh, who do you have, uh, Chargers? Or Vikings. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I think this is definitely going to be a, a a very very good game. Kirk Cousins has been playing some lights out football for the Vikings, but I think 
that offense for them Chargers, man, I think they're just too explosive for this Vikings defense. So I think I'm going to take the Chargers at home. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Chargers too, but I'm going to watch this game. I think it's going to be a really good one. Uh, you know, Minnesota, like I said, I think Minnesota is better than what the record shows, uh, but they are at home. I'm taking the Chargers, uh, but it's going to be a good competitive game. I think it's going to be a close one. It's going to be back and forth, back and forth. So it's going to be really interesting. So, but I'm taking the Chargers uh, like you are as well. Next, we have the Eagles and the Broncos. Eagles took the loss. We saw that uh, this past weekend. Broncos get a huge win over uh, um, Dallas. Um, you know, I'm going to take the Broncos. Uh, they're playing at home. I think they're going to come off that big win. That's a that's a big, huge win for the Broncos beating a Cowboy team that was on a row. Uh, that offense being supposed. So I think they're going to continue to be on that high, and, and I think they're going to beat the Eagles uh, next Sunday. Who do you have? Yeah, I think I'm. I'm going to take the Broncos. Also, get them two games over 500. The Broncos. They're, they're starting to try to play some some pretty good football, man. So you know. I, 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 I like Vic Fangio, he's a good hard-nosed coach. You know, I, I want to see the Broncos succeed. And like I said, I don't I don't see this Eagles team going anywhere. So yeah, I'm going to take the Broncos. Yeah. And then our last game, we're going to talk about some Monday night game. It's not tonight, but it's next Monday night. You got the uh, Los Angeles Rams uh, taking on the 49ers. Now we've talked a little bit about the 49ers and how bad they looked. And they, they just took this this loss. They weren't even really competitive. Uh, with the Cardinals, with the Cardinals team, that most of their stars were out on offense and on defense. They were still able to really put a whipping on on uh, on on the uh, 49ers. And you got to look like you talked about. Garoppolo had a really good game. He wasn't really bad, but still wasn't even competitive. So how much better can he play against a team now? Of course, the Rams are not the Cardinals, but this is still a very good team. And I think the Rams are going to come into this game. They're upset about this loss, so they're going to come in. And they're gonna they're 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 gonna want to get this win. They're not gonna fall too far behind. So I'm anticipating that the Rams will beat uh, the 49ers. Uh, so I'm gonna stick with the uh, Los Angeles Rams. Who do you have? Yeah, I see the Rams getting back on in a win in a win column this week. You know, like I said, they're I think they're gonna be upset about the way that they performed this week. I think they're gonna get it together. McVay on game plan good. So yeah, I got the the Rams over the 49ers. And also the 49ers is another team 0 and 4 at home. And mm. it, the home game for them, so I, yeah, I, I see the Rams winning this game. Yeah, so uh, this concludes our preview for Week 10. Uh, you know, uh, Thomas and I were coming on. We're going to come on every Monday. Like I said, uh, tune into GT Sports uh, Unlimited. If we can't come in on Monday, I'll put something out there once Thomas and I can work out a schedule. Hopefully it's kind of difficult if we don't get it on Monday because of his schedule. In my schedule, we have other things going on, but we do try to come on every Monday uh, if schedule permits. So we're going to make that commitment to come on every Monday at 5 o'clock. Uh, hopefully nothing will inter inter interfere with that. But, Thomas, this was great, man. We had some upsets in week nine. Uh, you know, things that uh, we didn't think were going to happen happen. Some of the teams that lost, really surprising. Uh, there's some good games coming up in week 10 that we just broke down and made our predictions on. Uh, I will uh, put up these posts here, some tonight. So be looking out every day on uh, Facebook, GT Sports Unlimited. Um, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, I put a poll so that all these games that we talked about will eventually be on our page before Sunday. And we may put a few uh, tonight, a few tomorrow, and, and so forth, you know, because I kind of try to put up at least three or four. But they will all get up there as soon as possible. They'll all be up before Sunday. If you see it, uh, just kind of vote. If you want to comment, you can comment in the comment section. But at least take a vote. Let us know uh, what team are you rooting for. If your team is up, then definitely vote. Vote for your team if you think that they're going to be able to win. But Thomas and I kind of come on every every Monday, and we make our own predictions. But this was another great week. This was uh, great. I, I mean, this was uh, – uh, GT Sports Unlimited, episode no number two. Uh, this video will be uploaded to GT Sports YouTube channel. Uh, it'll be up by tomorrow by 6 o'clock, uh, 6 a.m. in the morning. So I'll upload it. So if you guys want to see this, go to YouTube uh, and uh, type in uh, GT Sports like you see it on the screen back here behind me. And it'll pop up and then you can see it. It's also I also share it to our GT Sports Unlimited Facebook a page so you know I, I put the link out there so if you catch us there just press the link and it'll take you over uh, to the video on youtube so this was a lot of fun thomas i had a, a great time thank you for joining me uh we were able to get another a weekend of nfl football uh it's almost down to the wire here a couple more weeks but well, there's still quite a ways to go 
Uh, but I'm really anticipating getting on the roll and really talking about the playoffs leading up to the Super Bowl. Hopefully we can bring in some guests to the playoffs and then definitely have some guys join us uh, uh, come Super Bowl time. I think it'll make the conversation more exciting. So I'm working on that. But uh, we'll see you back next Monday at 5 o'clock to break down week 10 and preview week 11. So before I let, uh, I say good night, I'll give you the final word. Anything you want to add before we call it a night, Monday evening? Y'all already know. Go Baltimore. Well, Ravens are looking good, and they're still definitely in contention. We'll see if my Cowboys can get back to their winning ways uh, this Sunday. So, Thomas, until then, man, peace out. Thank you for joining me, man, and I will see you next Monday. Yes, sir. Good night, sports world. <laughs>